Right, good morning everybody. It's morning here at the moment anyway. Um, so today we're looking at adjectives and commas. I'm just going to put that a little bit higher. I think that's better. Um, I've noticed recently, in fact I noticed it a long time ago before I made the last video, but I didn't think about going into it in detail and I've decided to, to today because in my opinion there is a lot of confusion out there about adjectives and commas. When you have two adjectives together, when do you need a comma and when do you not need a comma? And you see a lot of different approaches to this and I want to try and show why today we have at least uh, two different approaches and I want to try to argue in favour of one of them but I'm going to try and show you the pros of both of them um, because they both have pros and they both have cons, they both have weaknesses and they both have strengths. Um, unfortunately neither of them give us a nice clear way for always choosing whether to use a comma or not between adjectives. Now, firstly, we have the Cambridge Way, which is also in the Chicago Manual of Style, which is also in the APA style, which I think is the American Psychological Association or something like that. But these are three different style guides, Cambridge, Chicago, APA. They all agree that we need to use commas with interchangeable adjectives. Now, that means adjectives that can be swapped around. That's what interchangeable means. It's a good word because it, it means what it sounds it means what it sounds like it means. You can swap around the adjectives before the noun and that means they are interchangeable. We also have the and rule which just means you can put an and in between the two adjectives and that means you've got what they call coordinate adjectives. If you can put an and between them it means they are working in a 50-50 way towards the noun. So let me give you a quick example of this. If we talk about something like, um, let me try and think of one of the examples on chomp chomp. If we talk about, uh, um, how about a, a, a tasty big sandwich, a big tasty sandwich. I think most people would agree that we could say a tasty and big sandwich, a big and tasty sandwich. Um, we could swap the adjectives around. They look like they're working in a 50-50 kind of way towards the noun. The noun, the sandwich is tasty, the sandwich is big. Neither of these two adjectives is more important than the other adjective. And so we call them interchangeable adjectives or coordinate adjectives. And we say that they work 50-50 towards the noun. Now, um, that all seems nice and straightforward, and perhaps that's a great way of, of deciding whether to use commas or not with adjectives. However, it does have its weaknesses, because we don't always have such nice, clear adjectives as big and tasty, tasty and big. Sometimes we have adjectives which, well, I mean, generally speaking, when we use adjectives, we use them in this order. Um, it's called the, the Order of Adjectives, and you can find information about it on Cambridge, for example, on the Cambridge Dictionary. They have a lovely long list. However, they do ha then have a load of examples which completely disregard their own rules for commas and adjectives. And so shame on Cambridge. They seem to have made a mistake there. I'm not sure why. But they, they have this nice long list where they explain that determiners come first. Now, you might be thinking, surely determiners aren't adjectives. Well, I'm afraid they are adjectives. Just, just because we say we call a certain group of words determiners, it doesn't mean they aren't adjectives. They are adjectives. They are irremovable adjectives. Um, other adjectives you can remove and the sentence will still make sense. Determiners you can't. But determiners come first in the, in the order of adjectives. And determiners are like numbers, possessive pronouns, um, this, that, these, those, they're those kind of words. Um, and then we use adjectives of opinion, and then adjectives of size, then adjectives of age, then adjectives of shape. Now, you probably realise then, because we use this order, if we talk about um, even a big tasty sandwich, big is in size, obviously, tasty is in opinion. And so... Um, <laughs> 
Sometimes you might say a tasty big sandwich, but some people might feel that saying big tasty sandwich is not okay. And so some people might not put the comma there. So already I hope you can feel where the weakness lies with this particular interchangeable adjectives rule. I like it because I like the idea of coordinate adjectives. I like the idea that they have a 50-50 relationship to the noun. But the problem is we have this order. And so if we talk about an old, um, a big old house, is it a big old house or an old big house? Big old house sounds much better because big comes before old. And it still seems to me like these two words might have a 50-50 relationship to the noun. So sometimes it's debatable. Sometimes we don't follow this order. When we talk about a, 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 a tall, dark, handsome stranger, we're saying tall, which is, um, I suppose, size. Dark, which is, I suppose, colour, maybe. Maybe opinion. And handsome's definitely opinion. So we normally say a tall, dark, handsome stranger. Why do we use that order? It seems to go against the order of adjectives. And so do we use commas or not? It's complicated. It depends on the writer. It depends what the writer feels. So this is why this definitely has, has its weaknesses. We don't always follow this order. And so sometimes you'll swap them round and they will feel, it, it won't feel right. Um, so it's not the best of rules to follow. It does leave a lot, of sen a lot of adjectives where one person will say it is good to swap them round. Another person will say they don't feel like it should, they should be swapped round. So it's not a very um, clear rule to follow. And this is why, I must admit, I'm going to side with Oxford in this debate, who have a different approach. And you can read about this approach if you go to the Oxford style guide. It's online. You can find the PDF. It's very easy to find. And Oxford have a completely different approach. It also has its weaknesses, but in my opinion, it gives you a better guide for whether you need commas between your adjectives. I still like this one because I, I think about prepositional phrases as adjectives sometimes, and prepositional phrases, whether they're coordinate or cumulative. And by the way, cumulative is what they say for commas. Uh, sorry, cumulative adjectives are adjectives which can't be swapped around, which are not interche interchangeable. I like thinking about that um, with coordinate and cumulative prepositional phrases. It really helps me. So I don't want to say that everything is bad here, but it doesn't always give you good sound advice for choosing your commas or not. Um, this one I think gives you much better advice. Oxford say that there are two types of adjective, and they're absolutely right. And if you've watched any of my TEFL videos um, about adjectives, you'll know that there are gradable adjectives, which are adjectives that can use the word very, slightly, and other um, intensifiers, other adverbs that, that modify the adjective. And um, that basically these adjectives, these gradable adjectives, can be modified. Um, they also form superlative forms and comparative forms. So you can say big, bigger, the biggest. Big is certainly a gradable adjective. Small is certainly a gradable adjective. Um, long is certainly a gradable adjective. Yeah, long, longer, very long, very big, very small. They're all gradable adjectives. Um, they also describe what they call classifying adjectives. And here they mean ungradable adjectives. But I must say that also colours are in here, colours as well. And when you think about it, you don't normally say redder or blacker or yellower, <laughs> more yellow maybe. Um, you don't usually um, use them in the comparative and superlative forms. They classify something. Something is either red or it's not red. So these classifying ungradable adjectives like nationality or material, these would definitely be ungradable adjectives. You can't get Britisher or more British, you just get British. Um, so these classifying adjectives are one type of adjective and these gradable adjectives are another type of adjective. Now Oxford give you this very simple rule. Use commas only when you've got a qualitative adjective and another qualitative adjective. In other words, a gradable adjective and another gradable adjective. 
So if you talk about, I don't know, um, a big tasty sandwich, yeah, you need commas. Because you can say very tasty and you can say very big. Nice, simple rule. Very, very clear. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, it has less weaknesses. I'm not saying that everything is clear here because sometimes it's not clear whether the adjective is gradable or ungradable. I can think of a few um, adjectives um, as which are, you know, questionable, which seem to come in the middle of this gradable and ungradable. Um, for example, sure. Do we say very sure or absolutely sure? We say both. And so there are some adjectives that kind of come in the middle of gradable and ungradable, but there aren't many. Most of them are very clearly either gradable, qualitative, or ungradable, classifying. And if you have qualitative and then classifying, no commas. And if you have classifying and then classifying, no commas. So the Oxford way is a little bit easier, in my opinion, and a little it gives you something to hold on to. And what bothers me about the Cambridge way is in particular the colour. Um, when I see, um, I remember from the witches, Roald Dahl's witches, witches wear silly black hats and Roald Dahl certainly didn't use a comma. He just put silly black hats. Now I think Roald Dahl is right. That doesn't really need a comma. But some people would say, well, I could say black silly hats. What's wrong with that? Some people would. They'd feel like that's fine. And so they put a comma in there. Well, um, it seems to me that it's a lot better to not use a comma. And I agree that with Oxford that black is a classifying adjective. Silly is very silly. It's a qualitative adjective. And so we don't use a comma there. I think it's a more logical approach. Um, so it's, it's all about what, what you prefer. I do see some advantages in this approach. And I like thinking about it when I'm, use, when I'm thinking about prepositional phrases and whether they need a comma or not. But I like the simplicity of the Oxford approach. Now, don't think I'm here just to suck up to Oxford. I'm really not. There's a lot that I will complain about in future videos, in particular about Oxford and the way they write their dictionary, um, online dictionary. Um, <coughs> And uh, Cambridge, they make mistakes as well. And if you want to look at their, 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 their page on adjective order, type it in now, Cambridge adjective order, go to their page. And what you'll see is they use commas with every single adjective on the whole list on their page. And that makes no sense to me whatsoever. So I, I, will, I don't suck up to any of these styles here. I think that actually they all have their weaknesses. They all have things which really annoy me. And I'll be talking about that in future classes. But I hope that was interesting for you. I hope that this approach clears up a lot of the confusion with adjectives and commas. It certainly helps me in many ways. Okay, um, if you have any questions, now's the time to do them. The floor is very cold in here today. It's a very cold day, so um, I'm, I want to go and sit back at my desk right next to the radiator. Um, so uh, if you've enjoyed the class, please give it a like and 